I started my recruiting agency a few years ago and we drove around 280K in that first year. I'm gonna cover my three <sighs> biggest takeaways from that first year, what you can do to implement in your business and what I would have done differently. All right, welcome back to the Solopreneur Recruiter Podcast, guys. Like and subscribe and check out Recruiter Rocket for a ton of free resources. I started my business a few years ago. Now it's been like four or five years ago at this point. And I was running a little side business that turned into a full-time marketing business. And I ran into my next business partner. I got him on the phone. I was pitching him and we hit the ground running. We just started building and figuring out what our business model was. But uh, we ended up needing to drive revenue and I had done a little recruiting in the past. We knew that there was a huge need for this. I had a handful of takeaways from what kept me from scaling a lot quicker. And that's the first takeaway that I had was scalability was very difficult. We, we, I was good at closing clients, very good clients in San Francisco and Texas and Boston and all these different locations. We were just taking on all these roles, which was great. We were putting them on the split board and we were making a lot of money doing this. But the problem is even when you have a split board, even when you're building infrastructure, the hardest thing about signing these contracts is having to fulfill them and actually having to do the recruiting. And it's very difficult, especially with technical roles. If you're doing solutions architects, you're doing sales, marketing, maybe CS, you're essentially running a bunch of different businesses because you're recruiting for different roles that have different personality profiles. They act differently online. They live in different places online. And even if you're a generalist in a different industry, there may be a similar process that you have. But scalability is very difficult if you don't have a niche or a focus. Number two is great recruiters are rare. So with our split board, a part of our model was to onboard as many recruiters as we could. This made things actually extremely difficult. It was exciting at first to get people onto the split board and people that were actually engaged with it too. And we had some like 1500 signups and I was hustling my face off, doing the phone calls, getting these recruiters in. And what I realized is everybody pitched me the world. All these recruiters, they were always generalists. They never really had a focus. We got them in and honestly, it felt like they created more issues for us. We were always working with the same like 15 or 20 recruiters that weren't necessarily giving us their 100% time and focus, but when they did submit candidates, we knew that they were potential fits. We didn't have to deal with constant follow-ups being like, hey, have you followed up with the Jackie candidate? Jackie's there. Jackie's there. And you go and you look at the profile and it's just a nightmare of a candidate from a match perspective. And it just created a lot more issues. So that gives you some really good context into what the market looks like. Really started to understand uh, employers, the way that they thought. And I wanted to really know what these great recruiters were doing. There's definitely common thread between them. Number three, this kind of builds on number two. If I provide a good recruiting service, I can repeat clients. And I just mentioned this, but you take the headache out of hunting clients, closing clients, or hunting clients and getting roles filled. When you have these clients that come back to you when they know your service is good, when they know you're gonna give attention to their roles and there's a good exchange there. And what's good about those situations too is when you can start to get this guaranteed or retained, the retained fees before you even do the search. You're going to make money and they're paying for your focus. Be customer obsessed. That's never going to go out of style. Number four is just pick a damn niche and just own it. Keep saying this over and over again. There's so much forbidden fruit when you decide on your business model and you're working all those roles at once. And the reason why people don't do it is because they're too lazy to build a sales process around it. It's very easy to get something up and running like a sales machine where you can spray and pray everybody and their mothers. You're gonna get a contract if you send out 10 to 15,000 cold sequences, of course. But the problem is now you have to work on those roles. So. I learned my lesson there. This is why I always preach it. There's a lot of money in just being good at one to three roles to get started and then expand from there. Yeah.